Conaky. I'm farm manager. We farm a thousand hectares of land in uh, Mid Wales. Uh, we have around 800 head of cattle, including uh, 550 dairy cows. We have 3,000 head of sheep, um, and we grow some arable crops. We can't deny it as farmers, as agriculturists, that uh, methane produced by cows contributes um, to global warming. I'm David Davis. I work at the Institute of Biological, Environmental and Rural Sciences at Aberystwyth University. Cows have a very complex digestive tract, more complex than humans. Within their stomach, they are able to digest plant fiber, and humans cannot. To do that, they need a very complex mix of bacteria and fungi and protozoa within their digestive system. Now, these microorganisms do not have access to oxygen, and the food that we eat as people gets converted into carbon dioxide and water. Because ruminants in the rumen don't have access to oxygen, they need to produce a different range of end products. And one of the key ones from the rumen is methane. When you compare with carbon dioxide, methane is 21 times more potent. The cow eats the feed in front of it, um, and it goes into its stomach, and, and as a result of that, the cow burps a lot. And this uh, gas, which is produced when the animal burps, uh, is one of the, the gases uh, linked to the warming and the greenhouse effect. Every cow and every ruminant regurgitates its food into the mouth to chew, and this enables the, the microorganisms in, in the stomach to actually get better access to that feed. And whilst they're regurgitating it, they're actually releasing methane. So every time the cud, as it's called, comes into the mouth, a small amount of gas will also be released, and this will contain a large proportion of methane. No, you don't notice anything about it, because it's just a, a natural process which occurs in all ruminants. The dairy cow that's producing eight to 10,000 litres of milk every year will produce around five to 700 litres of methane every day. So your average cow will produce around 700 litres of methane per day. This is equivalent to the amount of greenhouse gas CO2 emissions produced by a big four by four vehicle traveling around 35 miles per day. The ruminant population within the world is probably growing um, and it has to grow in line with the growth in population in order to feed that population. I think it should concern everybody. In 2006, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the FAO, published an important report which first brought the link between livestock farming and climate change to light. I'm now going to speak to Dr. Henning Steinfeld, the chief author of this report. Dr. Steinfeld, you have calculated that livestock farming is responsible for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions. That's quite a lot. In fact, 18% is quite a lot. It has to do with the fact that in this assessment we took into account all the changes in land use that are related to livestock, the production of animals in terms of methane, the manure management in terms of also methane and nitrous oxides, and the various steps of the feed production, livestock production, processing, transport, and so on, that have to do with livestock and feed commodities. And this is how you get to 18%. OK. How did you respond to yourself when you were confronted with these figures? I knew it was high. I knew also the impact on water and biodiversity was going to be very significant. I didn't expect it to be quite as high, but uh, this is the figure we came up with. And what do you think? What was the most shocking, amazing conclusion from your report? Well, I think one of the issues is that uh, this um, huge environmental impact that livestock have is not well understood by the public. It is not even well understood by the farmers themselves. So there is uh, actually a strong case for regulating the livestock sector much more than is currently the case. Thank you. 
Everyone is talking about global warming and trying to find out why it is happening. But how can it be that livestock farming is hardly ever mentioned as one of its causes? Certainly when more and more scientists have made the link between livestock farming and climate change. It's not generally known, but um, between 40 and 50 percent of all cereals are not eaten by uh, humans, but by um, livestock. And for soy, that's about 75 percent. If you consider that it takes about seven kilograms of grain, that's corn and soybeans, to just make one kilogram of beef, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of hectares of soy being planted in former rainforest to, to provide meat. That's not a very efficient way of, uh, of producing protein food. The soy is being import imported from places like Brazil. Brazil has the biggest soy export market in the world. And their soy production has grown since the 1960s, something like 57 times. So they're just producing more soy than ever before. And most of that soy is being produced in very environmentally sensitive areas, including the Amazon rainforest and the Cerrado, which is a woodland savanna. What can I say? It's a disaster. The main drawback is uh, losing biodiversity, but um, uh, indirectly it's also influ influencing uh, uh, climate change. It's uh, speeding up the climate change that's already occurring. Carbon sinks are places in the world like the rainforest or the Cerrado or some agricultural lands that soak up and sequester carbon. And, and when those are lost, we're losing a very important tool in the fight against global warming. Today, there's nothing more important than trying to contain the problem of global warming. And to do that, we cannot afford not to pay attention to agriculture. If we want to just achieve a fairly conservative objective in this sector, which is to stop this sector adding more by the middle of the century, then we have to take quite radical steps because um, the natural dynamic is that as populations get richer, they almost universally consume more animal products. In the global context at the moment, this, is, this, this argument really in a way focuses on China because China is the biggest increaser in meat consumption. You know, it's doubling every 10 years. The population of pigs and chickens in China is doubling every 10 years. These are monogastric animals. They don't create an greenhouse gas problem in terms of methane release, but they do create environmental problems because they have to be fed. And the feedstuffs have to come from global sources, and they come from soybean production in Brazil, which comes from deforestation and so on. If the rich countries keep on consuming at their high level and countries like China come up to our high level, then the situation will be much worse and that will make it very much more difficult to achieve global warming targets overall. So it's rather strange that most governments only focus on quick fixes, like taxes on gas guzzlers. Certainly when you realise that research shows that in a year a cow in the Netherlands will produce just as many greenhouse gas emissions as a car that drives 70,000 kilometers. 7,000 kilometers. This means driving around the globe more than one and a half times in a medium-sized car, I should add. <laughs> the image we get to see of global warming is always so one-sided. We only get to see factory chimneys and traffic jams. 
where are the public information campaigns about the relationship between carbon emissions and eating meat? I certainly haven't seen them yet in the Netherlands, despite the fact that we slaughter 500 million animals here each year. Animals, however, discover exactly what factory farming is very early on in their lives. Piglets, for example, are castrated without anesthetic. Their tails are docked, they are forced to live in dark concrete stalls and usually only see daylight when they are taken to slaughter. It's not much different for other factory farmed animals. Take laying hens, for example. They are crammed into battery cages and their beaks are trimmed to stop them from pecking one another. <laughs>